Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council is coming to you live from the council chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Tonight, the 15th Metropolitan Council holds its 84th business meeting of a four-year term. This is the fifth council meeting of 2023. Tonight's council agenda is 41 pages long, containing 123 items. That includes 23 second reading rezoning bills on public hearing tonight, 25 resolutions, 38 bills on first reading, 12 second reading measures, and 22 ordinances on third and final reading. The council will also consider two appointments by Mayor John Cooper to Metro Boards and Commissions. One is to the Fire and Building Codes Appeals Board. The other is to the Metro Historical Commission. Those confirmed will serve multi-year terms as unpaid volunteers. Among resolutions, the one with the highest profile is the first reading ordinance. It is BL 2023-1741. That is the $2.1 billion Titans Roof Stadium. It would be the largest public construction project in Nashville and perhaps in Tennessee history. By two-thirds vote, roughly the council gave approval last year to a preliminary term sheet for the plan. Now the final agreement is back to this body for approval. The ordinance is 250 pages long, and one council member describes it as full of dense legalese. Normally a bill, this kind of bill would be routinely approved on first reading and sent it with other first reading bills for more study and committee. But tonight this, sta this stadium ordinance will be pulled off the consent calendar we understand will be voted on separately. The motion will be for approval on first reading, then defer the bill until the first council meeting in April. There are some community leaders we understand here tonight who want an even longer deferral or may want an even longer deferral so there could that could be a source of some debate tonight deciding about this deferral motion. All this additional time will allow for perhaps more joint meetings of multiple uh, council committees to analyze the stadium measure. There's sure to be many questions asked of the Titans and officials about going Mayor John Cooper's office. When this bill comes back for a second reading, it must pass by a simple majority. On third and final reading, it must receive 21 votes for approval. The big question for many council members to determine is likely to be one of the changes in the final term sheet and the rest of the bill from what they thought they had approved last year. Is the bill open for amendments or changes by the council? The answer to those questions and possibly others could shape the rest of the debate on second and third readings. Again, RS 2023-1741 will need a 21 vote majority to pass on third and final reading. On the ordinance on public hearing tonight, BL 2022-1409 to make changes in how the city protects its tree canopy will be withdrawn at the request of the sponsor and the Metro Planning Commission. The bill has been advertised but deferred on public hearing three times since last October. It appears the measure needs more study. Under resolution, RS 2023-2037 will appropriate $1 million from the Community Safety Fund for a grant to the Urban League of Middle Tennessee. The monies are for a community safety grants that set aside in the operating budget for the provision of violence interruption services. The Urban League is overseeing those efforts to select and work with the nonprofit groups selected to receive the grant monies. RS 2023-2044 will establish the Nashville Needs Impact Fund. This new program is contemplated under preliminary non-binding term agreement for the new Titan Stadium approved last year. The funds would be used to provide resources to nonprofit entities serving Nashville and Davidson County in the areas of public education, public transit, affordable housing, and in support of diversity, equity, and inclusion in sports, and including gender equity. The funds would come from an annual contribution of $1 million at least the first year from the Tennessee Titans. The Metro government would also consider appropriations of other revenues generated by the new stadium, including the incremental property taxes not utilized for the campus infrastructure, also from net rents, and also from the local option sales tax, to also add to the fund. There's one amendment pending tonight that would allow the funds to be used for the provision of resources to entities related to the women's professional sports infrastructure, promotion, marketing, and direct recruitment of such teams. The council would form a committee each year to receive and consider applications for nonprofit entities and to recommend appropriations for the Nashville Needy Impact Fund, which the council may make consistent with the purpose of the overall fund. Because this is tied to final approval of the Titans Roof Stadium proposal, this resolution will likely be deferred until the ordinance, the ordinance one way or the other on the stadium is on third reading if it makes it that far. Resolution RS 2023-2046 would amend the pay plan for Metro Police to add incentive pay for certain job classifications. More specifically, it would supplement the pay for police officers who are working permanent dedicated shifts in the entertainment district unit downtown. The extra pay would be up to $1,250 of incentive pay per month. The incentive pay would be effective March 1st, or retroactive, I guess, to March 1st of this year. The council will vote on several resolutions accepting or applying for grants. Those accepting grants include RS 2023-2050 of just over $800 $11,000 from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to provide prevention, surveillance, diagno diagnosis, and treatment of HIV AIDS. It also includes funding for a minority AIDS initiative program. RS 
51 accepts the $10,000 grant from the Friends of the Metro Animal Care and Animal Control for emergency medical care for, for shelter animals. Under RS 2023-2052, the council will accept a $65,000 $65, grant from the Community Foundation for the $16,000 match from Metro required to fund the position of digital inclusion officer to manage the allocation of resources to ensure equitable service delivery and expand economic opportunities in meeting the needs of the underserved. In terms of applying for grants, RS 2023-2049 would seek nearly $645,000 from the U.S. Department of Energy to retrofit the Metro Nashville Historic Courthouse to replace the inefficient, to, to, to replace them with lower efficient incandescent bulbs with LED lamps, improve thermal efficiency, and minimize air leakage. RS 2023-2048 would seek almost $52,000 from the State Arts Commission to support arts projects that broaden access to art, the arts experience and ex enhance assess accessibility of asset-based cultural enterprises. Finally, RS 2023-2053 would seek almost $600,000 from the U.S. Depart De Depart Just Justice Department to be used to improve the response of civil and criminal justice systems to families with a history of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking, or in cases including allegations of child sex abuse. The application focuses on improving the capacity of courts and communities to, res to respond to families affected by these targeted crimes, including by providing court-based and court-related programs and training for people who work with families in the court system. Under memorializing resolutions, the council will recognize local educator Marisa Frank as a Recording Academy and Grammy Museum 2023 Music Educator Award finalist. Also, the council will recognize the 10th anniversary of the Nashville Financial Empowerment Center and establish the last Friday in March of each year as Strangulation Awareness Day in Nashville. Under second reading guild, the council will again consider BL 2022-1949 to establish a Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. The council will again consider separate bills to establish the Nashville Film and Television Advisory Board or create a Nashville Entertainment Commission. Since mid-December, the council has not been able to decide which one of e if any of these bills to approve. There are new amendments and substitute ordinances up for discussion. We understand both these bills will be indefinitely deferred and taken off the agenda after tonight. On third and final reading bills, BL 2022-1648 would rename a portion of Horton Avenue in honor of the legendary Grand Ole Opry star D. Ford Berry, African-American star, I should say, Grand Ole Opry star D. Ford Bailey. BL 2023-1690 would set up a permit program along with rules and regulations and fees for parklets and strategies in um, Davidson County that's related to sidewalk cafes. And finally, BL 2023-1694 would approve an amendment with Airbus and Helicopters, Inc. to let the Metro Police helicopter be used in an HIA Healy Expo 2023 show down in Atlanta. There were some questions at the last council meeting about the chopper going out of town, but police officials say it can be back quickly if needed. If you want to follow tonight's council meeting as it progresses, you can find the agenda and the staff analysis online. Just go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website, then on the Legislative Information Center. We'll also be placing the bill numbers on the screen when they come up for consideration so you can follow along and keep up with where we are in the meeting agenda. Let's now go to Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. He'll be gathering tonight's meeting into order shortly. Sorry, there's no children up here. So will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, March 7th, 2023. All members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for our invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Invocation tonight is brought to us by the Reverend Dr. Pedro Baston of the Payne Chapel AME Church, a guest of Council Member Sharon Hurd. Let us pray. Awesome and eternal God, we give deference to your name. We thank you for the blessings of this day. 
we are cognizant of the fact that it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. Bless now this council and all of our city leaders. We ask that you give them your guidance, wisdom, and support as they do the work of our city. Help them to engage in discussions and craft policies that move us to grow closer as a city and nurture the bonds of community. Lord, let this council body champion the cause of the poor, voiceless, marginalized, and disenfranchised. We pray that the interests of the people will be the interests of this august body so that they might work for the betterment of our city and each citizen, regardless of race, ethnicity, or creed, grant that they might have the courage to make difficult decisions and just and compassionate hearts, God, to deliver policies that will affect the lives of our people. Lord, we thank you for the service of our council persons. It is in your marvelous name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, y'all may be seated. Uh, with that objection, we'll suspend the calling the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from February 21st, 2023? Got a motion properly seconded. With that objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Mr. Clark, any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. All right, thank you. All right, couple of notes for tonight. Um, as you know, um, uh, House Bill 48, uh, the bill in the state legislature dealing with the size of the Metropolitan Council, passed on the full floor last night by a vote of 72 to 25, uh, passed in the Senate Finance Committee uh, this morning, and will now head to the Senate floor on Thursday. Okay, so an update on House Bill 48, Senate Bill 87. Um, do want to let you know, or um, we should all be thankful to NES. Uh, they have been working very diligently over the last uh, week after the storms uh, last Friday. Uh, as of about noon today, they had just over 3,000 NES customers still without power. Uh, and they're working, I know, in the small neighborhood clusters or individuals' homes and businesses. You should have that information. Um, let's see, the numbers as of around noon. Customers currently without power, 3,652. Total customers impacted by the storm, 115,000. Uh, customers whose power has already been restored, over 111,000. They had 169 broken poles. They have 130 plus crews working, and they're getting some assistance from um, other states. Uh, NES is, um, is ceasing disconnections uh, for non-payment through Thursday uh, for customers. So just be aware of that. I know they're still working right now. Um, thoughts are with Council Member Toombs, um, whose uh, grandmother passed away. And we're sorry to hear that. And um, there's a lot of stuff obviously going on. I know some people were um, injured and a couple people were killed over the last couple of days in terms of dealing with trees in this area. Um, lots of sad things still happening. Uh, pe um, keep um, people and countries and the world, including Ukraine, in your thoughts and prayers. All right, we are now ready for... Um, Elections and confirmations. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Councilmember Murphy, uh, ready for a report. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We had before us just one tonight. So we had Fire and Building Code Appeals Board appointment of Mr. Christopher Dunn for a term expiring on March 1st, 2027, and he was approved. Four in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. And then the Historic Commission um, appointee of Dr. Um, Castillo for a term expiring on August 10th, 2025, 
deferred. Uh, they were not able to join us. So that was four in favor, zero against. And just as a reminder, that is within our deadline. And so we will need to, they will need to appear, appear before us next time. Um, and we will have to vote on it because it's an automatic appointment. So just a reminder for everybody to pay attention for appointment dates. All right, uh, got a motion from Council Mary Murphy for the appointment of Mr. Christopher Dunn for the Fire and Building Codes Appeals Board. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the appointment of Mr. Dunn? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the appointment of Mr. Dunn for Fire and Building Codes Appeals Board say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. That's the only one, uh, Dr. Uh, Castillo will go next week. Mr. Dunn, are you in the audience somewhere? There you are. Thank you for uh, your willingness to serve Nashville. We appreciate it. And Mr. Dunn, you are uh, welcome to stay. Uh, we have a pretty good agenda, or you can sneak out as quickly as you want to. And I will say, I, I see uh, Police Chief John Drake is in the back. Welcome, uh, Chief Drake. All right, um, we are now ready for bills on public hearing. We do have a Spanish interpreter here uh, to help. Uh, Ms. Day Ruiz is here. If you'd come to the back microphone and just uh, in Spanish, please uh, indicate that you're um, here for assistance. Uh, buenas noches, mi nombre es Sandra. Yo voy a ser su intérprete para la sesión de hoy día, la intérprete en español. Gracias. All right, gracias. Thank you. Okay, uh, so we are now ready for bills on public hearing. Here's how that works for people in the audience. I'm gonna call the bills up one at a time and then refer to the sponsor. Unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, the sponsor will call for a public hearing. I will then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the bill, and then I'll ask for a show of hands for those who are here in opposition to the bill. Anyone in favor of the measure wishes to speak, I ask you to come forward to that back microphone, introduce yourself, give us your address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Then ask if anyone opposed wishes to speak, we do that as well. And after all that process, I'll close the public hearing and then refer back to the sponsor. Uh, we are now ready for the first measure. Uh, it is item number one, it's BL 2022-1409 by Council Members Murphy, Hancock, Hauser, and others. It's an ordinance amending Title II and Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws relative to trees. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you. I'm going to be withdrawing this bill, but I'd like to give a brief um, comment and explanation. All right, I, Council Member Murphy withdraws the bill. Back to you for an explanation. Thank you. I'd like to thank um, all of my fellow co-sponsors on this legislation and several other council members who I have talked to about this legislation who had not signed on, but I know were supportive or had good feedback and had ideas. Unfortunately, the reality, as we've already mentioned tonight, um, at the state level and at different levels is not the most hospitable for Metro to be going out and even doing things that are being done in other counties and other cities um, just right around the corner from us and bordering us. And so with that, um, in negotiations with other interest groups and stakeholders in the industry, it became clear that what is the greater good? We move forward and pass some really great legislation for Metro, or do we risk losing our ability to regulate and mandate and promote good trees and have good tree policy in Nashville? And so unfortunately, after about two years of work on this legislation, I am withdrawing it tonight because I think it is more important that we keep the legislation that um, colleagues like Angie Henderson have worked hard to get on the books and make sure that that's protected. And those industry um, stakeholders that I have met with have committed to work with us this summer. Um, they have committed to not move legislation at the state and in return, the advocacy groups that I've been working with um, and myself have made a commitment not to move this legislation in its current form forward here. And I am asking my fellow co-sponsors and colleagues not to pick up this legislation and move it forward. We will have those discussions this summer. Um, it, is, it is not how I wanted the outcome of this piece of legislation to go. But again, I think it's more important that the greater good of what we have on the books be preserved. 
and then we can work on preserving the future of our tree canopy together. And I am happy to answer questions later. Um, and I am fully expect many of you to um, come to those meetings with me this summer and we come in full force and we say, we hear from our constituents and our constituents are sick of, of lots being clear cut. We are sick of constituents being taken advantage of and losing trees in their neighborhood. Um, and and that is what I think will, will hopefully move the ball forward and we have other avenues to work as well. So. With that very long, not brief explanation, um, I am withdrawing the bill and I do thank all my colleagues and look forward to all of us working together to, to, to try this again. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Murphy. Uh, we are now on item number two. Uh, it's bill 2022-1581 by Council Members Benedict, Sledge, O'Connell, and others. It's an ordinance amending Metropolitan Code section 17.12.040 and 17.28.103. Regulate the location of electric utility meters in residential areas and to amend the requirements for underground utilities for new residential developments. Council Member Benedict, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this uh, bill. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the bill. Don't see anybody in opposition. Would uh, those in favor wish to speak? All right, uh, so we have one individual coming. If you would come to the back microphone, need your name, address, uh, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Um, and you may want to yeah, pick up the microphone. There you go. There we go. All right. Um, my name is Brandon Griffith, uh, 7 Bell Forest Avenue. Um, I'm, I'm president of the South Englewood Neighborhood Association. Um, I just want to say everyone I've talked to in the neighborhood supports this. Um, no one I have talked to is against this. And if you're not aware of what I'm talking about, I've brought some pictures. It's electrical meters in our front yards. And I'm happy to pass these out if anyone needs to see if you're not aware of what it is. Um, but I can explain it. It's essentially multiple electrical meters on metal framing, six feet tall in front yards. Um, it's, it's ugly. Um, you know, it, I just, uh, hold on, let me get back to my notes. Um, they're, they're next to sidewalks, they're at the end of uh, driveways, you know, they're right up to the property line to where it's almost on your neighbor's property. So you walk out your front door, you see this six, fall, six foot tall structure in your front yard, your next door neighbor's yard. Um, I, I just don't understand how anyone is okay with this. So I hope that everyone would support this bill so electrical meters are no longer installed in our front yards. Um, they're back on either the side of the house or close to the side of the house. Um, I, I spoke to NES at one time, the engineer that oversees the 37206 and 37216 area code. And the reason he gave me was reliability, cost, in, in safety, and if you're looking at this picture, I don't quite understand how an electrical meter under a tree is any more reliable or safe than a meter on the side of a house. Um, so all I would say is, you know, please support this bill. Everyone I've talked to supports this bill, um, and the community would appreciate the support of this bill because it would only make our community more beautiful. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak on this bill? All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Benedict, you're on your bill. Thank you. I'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. All right. Councilmember Benedict is moving approval of BL 2022-1581 for passage on second reading properly. Seconded. Back to you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So uh, Mr. Griffith, who spoke tonight, is the one who brought this to my attention. He lives in District 7, and he said, Emily, I'm out, or Councilwoman Bennett, he calls me Emily because I'm Emily to everybody. I'm out in the neighborhood and I'm walking around and I keep looking at this and it's an eyesore and what can we do about it? And through research, what I found is that nobody likes to do this. Nobody likes that this is in front yards, the developers don't like this, NES doesn't like this. And so this codifies what it is that we're all trying to get done and it'll make sure that the electrical meter that's in people's front yards ends up closer to the house or attached to the house where most of us expect an electrical meter to be. So um, with SPs, um, SPs uh, follow the typical SP process and so meters can go wherever an SP is allowed. But for infill development, this is gonna prevent those ugly things from being in people's front yards. 
and um, everybody has been uh, fantastically supportive of this. I don't think you've received any opposition, and so with that, I move approval. All right, uh, back to the motion to approve on second reading bill 2022-1581. Again, it was uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of bill 2022-1581 for passing on second reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Uh, item number three, Bill 2023-1682 by Councilmember Toombs. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from CL to CLNS zoning for properties located at 2425 and 2427 Brick Church Pike, southeast corner of Dennis Drive and Brooklyn Avenue. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of this bill. Okay, thank you. A show of hands to those who are here in opposition of this bill. Okay, didn't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Okay, come on up. Name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. And sorry about the microphone. That's fine. Okay. Good evening, Vice Mayor and distinguished members of the council. My name is Dr. Tanya Dennis. I am a resident at 417 Dennis Drive. I am a third generation resident of Historic Worker Neighborhood. Um, Dennis Drive clearly is personal to me. It was named after my paternal grandfather, who was the first licensed African-American masonry contractor in Davidson County. So a lot of the original sidewalks, uh, his Hume Falk High School, things of that nature that you see, that is his work. Uh, one of the uh, the reason why we are we are supporting this bill is because we are very much a very quiet neighborhood. We've had some a couple of meetings with the developers. Uh, we met with them. We also had a petition. We also uh, were told that there were simply going to be 66 units, but they're accessing those units from Dennis Drive. Within 0.3 miles of Dennis Drive and Trinity Lane, there are currently six major developments for residential. All of those residential uh, projects are being accessed from Brick Church Pike. Uh, so that somewhat bottlenecks us in, but we are living with that. However, we are quiet and we support this bill because we do not want Airbnbs and that noise coming uh, directly to our neighborhood. Thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak on this one? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Back to you, Council Member Toombs. Oh, Council Member Hart. <coughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm sorry uh, to, to interrupt, but I just wanted to stand and thank Councilmember Toombs um, for this because I know some of the people in the community had come to me and she was very receptive to the things that was being said. And I'm just grateful for her and for the work and the diligence that she's put into this. And I'm sure that the community is very happy as well. We don't have a motion yet, so anyway. <laughs> Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you. Move for approval. Okay, now we have a motion. So, um, <laughs> so Council Member Toombs moves for approval. Council Member Hurt is the second uh, discussion on the bill. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Bill 2023-1682. All those in favor of the passage of that bill on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, item number four, Bill 2023-1708 by Council Member Toombs, ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a contextual overlay district to various properties located west of Liberia Street and east of Baptist Rural Center Drive Zone RS5, R66A, and CN. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open a public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition of this measure. Councilmember Toombs, I didn't see hands either way. Close the public hearing. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Move for approval. Uh, motion to approve Bill 2023-1708, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor of Bill 2023-1708 for passage on second reading, say aye. Opposed, no. 
you adopt. Um, item number five, BL 2023-1709 by Councilmember Parker can be taken with item number six, uh, BL 2023-1709. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from CSORI RM20 and RS5 to SP zoning for various properties located west of Galton Avenue, north of Douglas Avenue, located within the Nashville Auto Diesel Col College Institutional Overlay District. And item number six, BL 2023-1710 by Councilmember Parker. That's the companion bill and ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-1709. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized on those two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. We're on BL 2023-1709 and 17-10. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to those two measures. Didn't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak? Good to go? All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Parker, you're on your two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval. Okay, Councilman Parker has moved for approval of Bill 2023-1709 and 1710. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, ready to vote. We're voting on 1709 and 1710 on second reading. All those in favor of those two bills say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Councilmember Parker. You got the next one as well. Uh, item number seven, Bill 2023-1711. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by canceling an institutional overlay for various properties west of Gallatin Avenue and north of Douglas Avenue located within the Nashville Auto Diesel College Institutional Overlay District. Councilmember Parker, you're on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1711. Right. A show of hands of those who are opposed to 1711. Same group. Uh, those in favor wish to speak on this one? Nope. Good to go. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilor Parker, you're on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with a brief comment. All right. So the, the Councilor Parker has moved approval of 1711 properly seconded back to you. Thank you. So um, we're we're working with both the prospective developer and the current property owner, um, the Lincoln Tech Auto Diesel College, on this one, um, and and we may end up deferring on third reading um, at the at the request of those two parties. I also just wanted to make note of the fact that we when we filed this, we missed uh, some properties that do need to be included. So we filed a follow up bill to grab those properties as well. Um, in the cancellation of this institutional overlay. So um, I would like to just uh, go ahead and, and approve this tonight. And if we need to do any deferrals, then we will do that on third. Okay. So the motion is to approve on second reading tonight. Again, it was properly seconded. Any discussion on 1711? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill for passage on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right, next one is Council Member Toombs, BL 2023-1714. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a contextual overlay district to various properties along either side of Ashland City Highway, surrounding local streets located north of Hyde's Ferry Road and south of Hydesdale Lane. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open on 1714. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the bill. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the bill. I, I didn't see hands either way. All right, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're on your bill. Thank you. Move for approval. Um, the motion is to approve 1714 on second reading properly. Second to any discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of 1714 for passage on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. It passes. Um, item number nine, Bill 2023-1715 by Council Member Hauser. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending a specific plan on property located at 7300 Charlotte Pike, southwest corner of Charlotte Pike and Old Charlotte Pike zoned SP. Uh, Council Member Hauser, you recognized on your bill. Uh, open the public meeting, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1715. Okay, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 1715. Don't see anybody in opposition. It looks like it's good. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Hauser, you're on your bill. Yes, I move for approval, please. All right. The motion is to approve 1715 for passage on second reading properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing 
none. All those in favor of 1715 for passage on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, Council Member Toombs, back to you. Bill 2023. Uh, 1717, Ordinance to Amend Title 17 by applying a contextual overlay district to various properties located north of Mor Mormons Arm Road and west of White's Creek Pike Zone RS10, RS7.5, and R6. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Councilmember... Um, the uh, hurt, I think, is in favor, okay? She's, but she's not supposed to talk right now. All right, so uh, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Move for approval. All right, so the motion is to approve, properly seconded by Council Member Hurt. Um, any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1717 for passing on second reading say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Uh, item number 11, Council Member Sledge. Uh, BL 2023 17 18, Ordinance to Amend Title 17 by change from IR to MULANS zoning. Property located at 469 Chestnut Avenue, approximately 69 feet north of Humphrey Street. Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you for the public hearing, please. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. All right, thank you. A show of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Looks good. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Sledge, recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Uh, the motion is to approve 1718 for passage on second reading properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1718 for passage on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes. Thanks to Council Member Allen, who I heard say aye. Uh, item number 12, BL 2023-1719 by Council Member Roberts and Pulley. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IR to SP zoning. Property located at 5901 California Avenue at the southeast corner of 60th Avenue North and California Avenue. Council Member Pulley, you recognized. Are you on this? Thank one? you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Yeah. Uh, I move to open the public hearing. Okay. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1719. All right. Thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 1719. Didn't see anybody in opposition. Sir, would you like to speak? Good to go. All right. Thank you. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Pulley, you're recognized on 1719. Thank you. I move approval. Okay. The motion is to approve 1719 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1719 passing on second reading say aye. aye. Uh, those opposed say no. Bill passes on second reading. Uh, Council Member Toombs, back to you. BL 2023-1720. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from OR20 to CL zoning. Property located at 2106 Point of Vista Pike, approximately 290 feet northeast of Clarksville Pike, 0.14 acres. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open a public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Don't see anybody on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're on 1720. Move for approval. Uh, motion is to approve 1720 for passage on second reading properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1720 for passage on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on second reading. Uh, we're on BL 2023-1721 by Council Member Welsh. Uh, that's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS5 to OR20 zoning for property located at 2206 Austin Avenue. Portion of property located at 341 and 341C Oriel Avenue at the southeast corner of Oriel Avenue and Austin Avenue. Council Member Welsh, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open on 1721. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Don't see anybody in opposition. Sir, would you like to speak? All right, name, address, two minutes in which to speak. 
Jeremy Gill, 1208 Russell Street, 37206. My wife does not like me to speak in public, so she wrote something for me. I'll be, I'll be brief because the change request is so minor that it does not warrant significant time by Metro Council. The South Nashville Community Plan created a transition policy to enhance and create areas that can serve as transitions between higher intensity use or major thoroughfares and lower density residential neighborhoods. Housing in TR areas can include a mix of types and is especially appropriate for missing middle housing types. Our request for this policy and zoning change is the support of zoning commission because it accomplishes precisely that goal. It creates the missing middle housing type to soften the transition between on the one side, Nolensville Pike, the railroad, commercial housing, and a junkyard, and single family housing on the other. This change also has the support of the Woodbine community. None of the adjacent property owners are opposed to the change, and several of them have written emails to the staff and councilperson Welsh in support. Three other property owners in close proximity, but not immediately adjacent to the property, have expressed either verbal support at the community meetings or written support to the staff and councilperson Welsh. Only two property owners have expressed opposition to the zoning change, and neither of them live within several blocks of the subject property. That leaves 184 property owners who are either neutral or in tacit support of the change. The two property owners opposed to the change are afraid that it will threaten the residential character of Woodbine, but this policy chain affecting one and one thirds lots does, that sounds weird, one and one thirds lots does just the opposite. By providing a buffer between a busy thoroughfare and a semi-permanent encampment for the unhoused on land owned, but sadly not carefully managed by CSX and dilapidated warehouse, it provides protection to the residential housing on the other side of the subject property, which is why the property owners must immediately, most immediately impacted by the policy change are in full support. By allowing both residential, that was me, office space creates eyes on the street, the day, increasingly safety. I support that. Thank you. i uh, tell your wife she did a nice job on that, okay. Anybody else wishing to speak? Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Welsh, you're recognized. Thank you, I'd like to offer Mr. Gill a job on my staff. He okay. did a great job explaining right. everything. Uh, move for approval. All right, the motion is to approve 1721 for passes on second reading. Properly seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1721 for passes on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. That one is approved. Uh, we are now on uh, BL 2023, 1722, which can be taken with 1723. This is Council Member Gamble. Uh, 1722, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying uh, historic landmark overlay district properly located at 815 Nella Drive. It's approximately 450, uh, 450 feet west of the corner of Green Acre Street and Nella Drive. And then the companion bill, 1723, ordinance to authorize building material restriction requirements for BL 2023-1722. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of building. Council Member Gamble, you recognized on the two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. We're on 1722 and 1723. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two bills. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the two bills. Don't see anybody either way. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Gamble, you're on your two bills. Move for approval. Uh, the motion is to approve both 1722 and 1723 for passage on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of passage of 1722 and 1723 say aye. Opposed, no. Those bills were passed on second reading. Uh, Council Member Toons, back to you, Bill 2023-1724. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from CN and CS to MULA zoning for property located at 1211 Brick Church Pike, northeast corner of Brick Church Pike and Fern Avenue. Council Member Toons, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open on 1724. Uh, show of hands of those here who are here in favor of the measure. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing nobody in opposition, those in favor wish to speak? Oh, okay, come on up. Name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. 
So of course, thank you. My name is Dr. Jamie Hardy. I live at 648 Mormons Arm Road. I'm here this evening because the sign was placed in my yard and I thought that I might need to be here. Um, I have lived at this property with my fiance now for four years and it has been a real challenge to see the amount of traffic congestion that has not been addressed. It's a longstanding issue, but we've seen a number of both pedestrian and car accidents at the corner of Cravath and 648 Mormons Arm Road. That is my primary concern. To my understanding, um, this would help with that. Um, it is my hope that a contextual overlay would allow some opportunity for the neighborhood that is currently there to breathe and for there to be some other measures taken uh, to address any of the other uh, traffic concerns and safety concerns that are there in the neighborhood. I feel great pride living there in that neighborhood and I felt that it was important for me to rush here after work. Um, it is very important to me that that neighborhood continue to um, exist and thrive. That was uh, a opportunity that I had to purchase a home there um, at a young age under 30 and it is my responsibility to make sure that our neighborhood continues to uh, grow and thrive in the way that that it has and hopefully it continues to um, feed us as it has so thank you for your time all right thank you dr hardy anybody else wishing to speak on bill 2023 1724 seeing none declare the public hearing closed councilor tombs over to you thank you mr vice mayor um I want to make a quick comment before I move for approval uh, for the Haynes Manor subdivision. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Hardy, for coming down tonight. There is a, we discussed the overlay previously and that actually passed on second reading tonight. Um, there's also a neighborhood conservation overlay that is in the pipeline. And also there is a, Haynes Manor was awarded a traffic calming program a project. And so there will be, speed cushions on four streets in the Haynes Manor subdivision that's gonna help with the traffic and speeding and things like that. So I just wanted to, to note that. Um, and with that, I will move for approval. Okay, so I've got a motion to approve uh, Bill 2023-1724 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded any discussion on the bill. <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor of 1724 for passage on second reading say aye. Those no. Bill passes on second reading. Uh, we're on number 18, Bill 2023-1725 by Councilmember Van Rees, which can also be taken with uh, item number 19. Uh, 1725, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CS to SP zoning for properties located at 3101 and 3105 Jefferson Pike, northeast corner of Jefferson Pike and Broadmoor Drive, uh, and 1726, which is the companion bill, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for Bill 2023-1725. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of building. Councilmember Van Rees, you recognized on your two bills. Well, let's open the public hearing. Let's do it. We're going to open up the uh, the public hearing on both those two bills. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two bills. Raise your hand. All right. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition uh, to those two bills. I saw nobody who was interested on this two bill, sorry. So we're gonna declare the public hearing closed. Councilor Van Rees, you're recognized on your two bills. Thank you very much. I'm uh, happy to have this um, move forward and ask for your approval. All right, so Councilor Van Rees is uh, moving approval of 1725 and 1726 for passage on second reading properly. Seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the two bills say aye. Opposed, no. Nope. Those two bills are passed on second reading. Uh, BL 2023, 1727, that's item number 20. Councilmember Roberts and Pulley, an ordinance to amend Title 17. By change from R8 to RM15 ANS zoning, properties look at 5705 A and B Robertson Avenue, 5707 A and B Robertson Avenue, approximately 130 feet southeast of Snyder Avenue. Councilmember Pulley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands for those who are here in favor of that measure. Show of hands of those who are uh, here in opposition to that measure. Seeing nobody on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Pulley, you're recognized. Uh, move approval. Okay, so Council Member Pulley has moved approval of 1727 on second reading properly. Seconded, any discussion? 
Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor of Bill 2023-1727 for passage on second reading say aye. Opposed, no, you, would, you adopt. We're on BL 2023-1728, um, that's Council Member Hancock, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by change from RS 40 to RS 15 and CN to R80, RS 80, excuse me, zoning for various properties located south of Evergreen Trail and uh, Nawa, Nawakwa Trail on either side of Neely's Bend Road. Council Member Hancock, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. President. And put in the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Mm -hmm. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. That's where everybody was. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Don't see anybody in opposition. Anybody in favor wish to speak? This is your chance to be on television. Come on up. Name, address, and two minutes. And you don't have to put on your code if you don't want to. Okay. Uh, name is Brandon Krell, address is 325 Manise Lane, Madison, Tennessee, 37115. Uh, just to be brief, I just wanted to thank the council for all their work and specifically thank the council member for their work uh, supporting our neighborhood association and the goal that we have to protect the rural character of Neely's Bend. Uh, rode a bush hog, rode a tractor with a bush hog today, waved at cows, waved at horses. That's a good day in my book. And, uh, you know, on the record at the Planning Commission meeting, there are some defamatory comments made, and then there was a mailing sent out that was also defamatory of our, our council member. And, and I just wanted to go on the record in support and thanking her for her work on this bill. Thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to speak on this one? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Councilor Hancock, you're recognized on the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move for approval with a brief comment. All right, uh, the motion is to approve Bill 2023-1728 for passage on second reading, properly seconded back to you. So um, the point of this item on the agenda has been under work since last June, where the neighborhood um, formed a neighborhood association and as a result of an item that was denied at the planning commission, used the recommendations from the planning commission to ask for a um, rezoning to get the zoning of this area in compliance with the Nashville Next policy of T2 rural maintenance. The northern terminus of this T2 rural maintenance area Nowaka, you don't say the second W. I've just recently learned that, so we're all in the same boat. Thank you. Um, the, that northern terminus is was number five out of 412 and some odd um, traffic calming applications, number five most dangerous in the city in a T2 rural maintenance area. So we're working on that traffic calming. We're gonna have a meeting in April about that. But I just wanted to emphasize the importance of our diversity in character across the city. In our district in particular, we have rural, suburban, and urban. And, and we would like to protect each of those and make sure that the city is for everyone. So with that, I ask for your approval. All right, so Council Member Hancock, again, has moved for um, uh, passage of uh, Bill 2023-1728. Uh, on second reading, again, it was properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of 1728 for pass on second reading say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. All right, we're on items number 22 and 23. These are by Council Member Taylor. BL 2023 1729. Uh, it can be taken with BL 2023 1730. Um, 1729, ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R6 to SP zoning for property located at 1833 Ed Temple Boulevard, northwest corner of Ed Temple Boulevard and Buchanan Street. It's 3.32 acres. And the companion bill, which is 1730, ordinance to authorize building material restriction requirements for BL 2023 1729. Uh, the proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Taylor, you're recognized on your two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to open the public hearing. Okay, case. declare the public hearing open on both 1729 and 1730. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two bills. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those two bills. Seeing nobody in opposition, uh, would you all like to speak? Good to go. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Taylor, you're on your two bills. Thank you, move for approval. Uh, the motion is to approve both BL 2023, 1729 and 1730 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded, any discussion? 
Seeing none, we're ready to vote on 1729 and 1730 for passage on second reading. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, both those bills pass on second reading. And ladies and gentlemen, that completes our public hearing calendar for tonight. <clears throat> All right, we are now ready for um, consent resolutions um, and resolutions. We're gonna take the consent agenda resolutions first. Uh, let's go through those and I'll mark, um, we can mark which ones are on the consent calendar. Um, item number 24, RS 2023. 2002 is on consent. Item number 25, RS 2023, 2037 is on consent. Uh, RS 2023, 2038 is on consent with the understanding that Councilmember Welsh has to abstain. Uh, RS 2023, 2039 is on consent. Uh, 2040 is on consent. 2041 is on consent. 2042 is on consent. <coughs> 2043 is on consent. Uh, item number 33, RS 2023, 2045 is on consent. 2046 is on consent. 2047 is on consent. 2048 is on consent. 2049 is on consent. Item number 39, RS 2023, 2051 is on consent. 2052 is on consent. 2053 is on consent, 2054 is on consent, 2055 is on consent, 2056 is on consent, 2057 is on consent, 2058 is on consent, 2059 is on consent, and 2060 is on consent. All right, anything needs to be bumped off the consent calendar? <coughs> Councilmember Welsh, you're recognized. Um, could we pull item number 25 off consent, please? Thank you. Okay, item 25 is coming off of consent. That's RS 2023 2037. <clears throat> Anything else needs to be come off of uh, the consent calendar? All right. Okay, I'm going to read the captions of the bills for you. Um, first one is RS 2023-2002 by Council Members Roten, Withers, and others. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Government of National Davis County acting by and through the Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewerage Services to enter into an agreement with Novo Antioch Owner LLC to fund the operation and maintenance of a force main within the public right of way for its development 1421 Royal Hill Road. Uh, item number 26, RS 2023-2038 by Council Member Murphy. Resolution approving the election of certain notary publics for Davidson County. Uh, next item is RS 2023-2038. 39, resolution extending the housing incentive pilot program in accordance with section 2.213.100 of the Metropolitan Code. Item number 28, RS 2023, 2040 by Council Members Hauser, Roten, and others. Uh, this is a resolution to approve the fourth amendment to a grant contract for constructing affordable housing approved by RS 2018, 1088 between the Metropolitan Government uh, acting through the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission and Crossroads Campus. Item number 29, RS 2023, 2041 by Council Members Hauser, Roten, and others. Resolution to approve the fourth Fourth Amendment to a grant contract for constructing affordable housing approved by RS 28, uh, RS 2018 1088 between the Metropolitan Government acting through the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission and Westminster Home Connection, RS 2023 2042 by House of Roten and others. Resolution approving amendments to three grant contracts for constructing affordable housing approved by RS 2020 239 between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County acting through the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission, certain nonprofit organizations. Item number 31, RS 2023 2043, House also wrote and others. Resolution approving a first amendment to six grant contract six grant contracts for constructing affordable housing approved by RS 2021 936 between the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission and certain nonprofit organizations. Uh, item number 33, RS 2023 2045 by Council Members Roten and Pulley. Resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government and National Davidson County and CDK Enterprises DBA. Southern Lighting and Traffic System provide service maintenance and licensing for the Centrax ATMS software. Uh, 
Item number 34, RS 2023-2046, wrote in Syracuse and others. Resolution amending the pay plan adopted for employees of the Metropolitan Department of Police and Fire, effective July 1st, 2022. Item number 35, RS 2023-2047, by Councilmember Withers. Resolution to approve the delegation of authority from the Metropolitan Planning Commission and the Planning Commission staff related to approval of subdivision plats. Item number 36, RS 2023-2048, wrote and heard and others. Resolution approving an application for an arts built communities grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metropolitan government through the Metropolitan Arts Commission to support our projects to broaden access to the arts experience and enhance the sustainability of asset-based cultural enterprises. <laughs> Item number 37, RS 2023-2049 by Roten, Hancock, and others. A resolution approving an application for an energy efficiency and conservation block grant from the U.S. Department of Energy to the Metropolitan government through General Services for an energy retrofit from the Metro Nashville Historic Courthouse to replace lower efficient incandescent bulbs with LED lamps. Prove thermal efficiency and minimize air leakage. Uh, next item is <clears throat> Item number 39, RS 2023-2051, wrote in Syracuse and others, resolution accepting a grant from the Friends of Metro Animal Care in control of the Metropolitan Government Acting Bond through the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide funding for emergency medical care for shelter animals. Item number 40, RS 2023-2052, wrote in Allen and others, resolution accepting a grant from the Community Foundation Middle Tennessee the Metropolitan Government through ITS to fund the position of Digital Inclusion Officer to manage the allocation of resources to ensure equitable service delivery and expand economic opportunities and meeting the needs of the underserved. Item number 41, RS 2023-2053, wrote in Syracuse and Sawara, a resolution approving an application for a justice for families grant for the U.S. Department of Justice to the Metropolitan Government, acting by to the Office of Family Safety, improve the response to the civil and criminal justice system for underserved communities while providing resources and training to court burst personnel. Item number 42, RS 2023-2054, wrote in Syracuse and others, resolution accepting a high-intensity drug trafficking areas program grant for the Office of National Drug Control Policy to the Metropolitan Government through uh, the Metro Nashville Police Department to provide additional funding to aid in the investigation of drug-related deaths. Item number 43, RS 2023-2055, wrote in Pulley, resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Government through the Department of Water and Sewer Services to enter into a waste data pilot program with Routeware Global and to accept a donation of $30,000 for hardware, software, and services associated with the program. Item number 44, RS 2023-2056, wrote in Pulley and others, a resolution approving a grant application for the Recycling and Education Outreach Grant from the United States Environmental Protection Agency to the Metropolitan Government through the Department of Water and Sewer Services to develop multilingual outreach tools focused on reducing contamination, increasing participation, improving community engagement. Uh, item number 45, RS 2023-2057, a resolution to amend ordinance number BL 2021-683 to authorize the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davis County to add phasing and to update the map and parcel information acceptance of public sanitary sewer mains, manholes, and easements for now two properties located at 1133 and 1201 Neely's Bend Road. That's Council Member Hancock, Withers, and Pulley. Item number 46, RS 2023-2058, Evans, Withers, and Pulley. Uh, resolution to amend ordinance number BL 2022-1338 to authorize the Metropolitan Government to add phasing to the acceptance of new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hunter assemblies, sewer manholes, easements to update the map and parcel information for two, now two properties located at 1300 Central Court and Central Pike unnumbered. Uh, RS 2023-2059 by Pulley, Roberts, and Withers. Uh, resolution recognizing Marissa Frank as a Recording Academy and Grammy Museum 2023 Music Educator Award finalist and RS 2023-2059 2060 by Withers and Tawara, a resolution recognizing the 10th anniversary of the National Financial Empowerment Center. All right, those are the items on the consent um, agenda for resolutions. Anything needs to be bumped off? Anything else? All right, let's go to committee reports. <coughs> uh, Council Member Roten, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance to approve resolution 2023, 2037, 2040, 41, 42, 43, 45, 46, 48, 49, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, and 56. 12 in favor, zero against. All right. Council Member Hauser, affordable housing. Affordable housing approved RS 2023, 2039, 2040, 2041, 2042, and 2043. Five in favor, zero again. All right, thank you. Government Operations, Councilmember Benedict, way in the back. Councilmember, you've got two, 2046 and 2052. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Sorry for the delay. Those passed on Committee 7 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Withers, uh, Planning and Zoning. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning met and considered resolutions RS 2023-2047, RS 2023-2057, and 2023-2058. And we recommended each of all three of those, six in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, Council Member Hart, public facilities. You've got one. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, public facilities, hearts, and culture reviewed RS 2023-2048, and they approved six in favor and zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Hart. Council Member Syracuse, Public Health. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public Health and Safety considered RS 2023, 2037, 2046, 2050, 2051, 2053, and 2054. Recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against. All right, Councilor Murphy, uh, rules. Thank you. We had 2020, I mean, I'm sorry, 2038, um, 2059, 2060, 2061, all were four in favor, zero against, but I believe that um, 2038, um, we didn't pull it, but if you could just mark, I believe there is a council member who needs to abstain. If you could abstain, uh, Council Lady Welch. That's right, it's okay by the rules. Council Member Welch is abstaining on 2038. And uh, last but not least, Council Member Pulley, Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Transportation Infrastructure recommended approval of RS 2023-2045 and 2055 through 2058. 10 in favor and zero against, and I move approval of the consent agenda. All right, Councilor Pulley has moved approval of the consent agenda for resolutions properly seconded. Um, any discussion on that? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor of the consent resolution and agenda say aye. <laughs> Opposed, no, you adopt. Okay, let's go back and pick up the ones that were not on the consent agenda. Again, on that one, on that approval, uh, Councilmember Welsh abstains on RS 2023 2038. All right, we're on item number 25, RS 2023 2037 by Councilmember Roten, Syracuse, and others. It's a resolution appropriating a total of $1 million for, from a certain account of the Community Safety Fund for a grant to the Urban League of Middle Tennessee. Councilmember Roten, uh, we're on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I would uh, move approval. And I guess I'll get the budget and finance. Uh, we uh, moved approval, 12 in favor, zero against. Okay, and Council Member Syracuse, you've got public health. Public health and safety, uh, recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against. Okay, uh, back to you, Council Member Roten. Uh, renew my motion. Okay, so Council Member Roten is moving approval of RS 2023, 2037, properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Welsh, discussion. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, when I was looking over this grant, I just had a couple of questions and I could not get, I'm not on the committees that it went before and I couldn't get to the committees to have someone ask the questions for me. So I wonder if I could ask the administration if they could explain a couple things that are in this grant. All right, go ahead and ask the questions and I've got their microphone turned on. Um, first of all, it looks like this grant is for a two-year contract that's asking for two case managers, but they have almost $69,000 in travel and conferences, and that seems a little bit excessive. Um, is that just for the two case managers, or is that travel and conference money for, you know, larger um, Urban League staff? Mr. Jameson? We understand it is for the two uh, case managers, but I can... Uh perhaps prior to uh, the deliberation on this check with Mr. Lacey, Mr. Ron Johnson to see if it includes the uh, travel budget as well. I don't think it does. Um, thank you. Um, there are also $123,000 in professional fees and 39,000, just under 40,000 in other non-personnel that are listed. And I'm just wondering what those expenses are actually for. I, well, I can't answer that question here without uh, either Mr. Johnson or Mr. Lacey's uh, input. I can ask them if you want to move this to the heel, see if I can get the information before that, but otherwise um, need their information. Um, okay, I had one other question. I'm trying to decide if I want to move it to the heel or maybe to defer it for a week. Um, they're just randomly uh, in several different line items. Um, the same number was used over and over again as the expenses, and I just wondered why all those line items were listed as the exact same expense, $6,844. Just... Mr. Jameson. I do not have a clue. Random. Um, so I would like to actually move for a deferral if we could for uh, one meeting, just so we can get the answers to the questions. I would right, appreciate so, that. Uh, we have a motion to defer one meeting. Prop 
properly seconded. Uh, any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, we're on a deferral motion of one meeting for RS 2023-2037. Uh, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this one's deferred one meeting. Uh, Mr. Jameson, have you got the questions? Councilman Welsh, if you'll just make sure that uh, Mr. Jameson has the questions, he can get it back to you. Okay. Oh, Council, Council Member Evans? I voted no, I just want to be- oh, you, want, does, you voted no. no on the deferral motion? That's correct. Okay, so Council Member Evans votes no on the deferral motion. Okay. All right, we are now on, this is uh, item number 32, RS 2023-2044. Council members Withers, Roten, Hurt, and others. This is a resolution creating a national needs impact fund to help provide resources to nonprofit entities serving national and Davidson County and designated certain amounts there too. Uh, Council member Withers, uh, you recognized on the bill. Um, excuse me, on the resolution. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, can I get committee reports, please? Sure, you can. Council Member uh, Roten on budget and finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, budget and finance approved Council Member Van Reese's amendment, 12 in favor, zero against. And then we voted to defer to the first meeting in April, April with 12 votes in favor, zero against. Okay, and Council Member Hart, public facilities. <clears throat> okay. Council Member Hart. That's okay, you were whispering Councilor Mendes's ear. All right, so public facilities, we got a committee report waiting on RS 2023-2044. Uh, they voted to uh, defer. Okay, did y'all take up the amendment in there? We did, the, the amendment passed and then they voted six in favor and zero okay. uh, for the amendment and uh, six in favor for the deferral. All right, you can go back and talk to Councilor Mendes some more. All right, uh, back to you, uh, Councilor Mayor Withers. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. My intention for this one is to, um, we have a consideration of an amendment, so I would like to consider the amendment, but then I do intend to defer. To okay, so um, we're gonna take, uh, Councilman Van Rees, uh, you have an amendment on this resolution. You're recognized. Uh, yes, I'd like to move the amendment with an explanation. All right, so Councilman Van Rees has moved the amendment to RS 2023-2044 properly. Seconded back to you. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to make sure all my colleagues understood that this is a friendly amendment and uh, has the support of all uh, those involved. Um, it uh, primarily indicates um, that the fund can also be used for the provision of resources to entities related to professional women's sports, infrastructure, promotion, marketing, and direct recruitment. Um, this is a, a clarifying uh, amendment uh, of the original intent and I appreciate your support. Okay, so Council Member uh, Van Rees is moving her amendment to RS 2023-2044, again properly seconded. Discussion on the amendment. Seeing none, we're ready to vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment to RS 2023-2044 say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendments on. Now, Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for a two-meeting deferral. All right, so Councilman Withers is moving for a two-meeting deferral on RS 2023-2044. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? It's two meetings. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. This one's deferred two meetings and it's got that amendment on it. Okay. Next one is item number 38. It's RS 2023-2050 by Council Members Roten, Syracuse, and Welsh. It's a resolution accepting a grant for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health to provide for the prevention, surveillance, diagnosis, and treatment of HIV AIDS and to administer a minority AIDS initiative program. Council Member Roten, you're recognized on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I would move approval, uh, budget and finance approved. 11 in favor, zero against, with one abstention. That's why we're here, not on the consent calendar. Council Member Hurt uh, asked to abstain on that. All right, Public Health, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Public Health and Safety uh, recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, Council Member uh, Roten, back to you for a motion to approve. Renew my motion. All right, so Council Member Roten is, a, is moving to approve RS 2023-2050, properly seconded. Council Member Hart, you have to abstain. Okay, Council Member Hart is gonna be listed as, as abstaining. All right, the motion is to approve. Any other discussion on this one? 
Right, seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution RS 2023-2050 for passage say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that's adopted and Council Member Hurt is gonna be listed as abstaining. And I believe we have one more left. It's item number 49. Uh, it's RS 2023-2061, Councilmember Syracuse and Evans. It's a resolution establishing that the last Friday in March of each year is recognized as Strangulation Awareness Day in Nashville. Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized on your resolution. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I need to move approval, I'm sorry, I need to move uh, a deferral one meeting. Two meetings. Two meetings. <laughs> okay, do you have a committee report coming out? Oh, I guess I... Uh... All right, Councilmember Murphy, uh, rules. Do. All in favor, zero against. I think that would be four. That was uh, for a deferral, is that what it was? I'm sorry, are we on item number 49? We're on item number 49, or is No, there was not a motion to, that we were not requested to defer or anything, so we moved it on on consent. Okay, all right, so you, you approved it. Councilmember Syracuse, back to you. My apologies, I was running the Public Health and Safety Committee meeting, I couldn't get to uh, there, but it has been requested um, by, um, uh, by a PD, basically, that to defer this two meetings. Okay. Um, so the motion is gonna be defer yeah. two meetings? Yeah, we're gonna get, we, we're gonna get an amendment on there, it's actually gonna be in May instead of March, this is what, that's what the amendment's gonna be. Okay, so the uh, Council Member Syracuse is moving to defer this, R, this resolution, RS 2023-2061, for two meetings, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no, this one's deferred two meetings. Okay, that should take care of all resolutions on uh, both consent agenda and resolutions. Uh, we are now on bills on introduction and first reading. Uh, does anything need to be bumped off of uh, bills on introduction first reading? Councilmember Withers, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. For item number 51, my intent is to move it on first, but I would like to defer the second reading uh, to the first meeting in April. Okay, we're gonna bump it off and then we'll pick it back up. Anything else needs to be taken off of um, first reading? I think Councilmember Syracuse, you had something further back. It's item number 83, BL 2023-1773. Do you need to bump that when you have a substitute ordinance on it? Got it? Thank you very much. I need to add a substitute and then uh get it back into the pipeline. Okay, so we're gonna bump it off of first reading yes, and then we'll take you. it up separately. Okay, anything else needs to be bumped off of uh, first reading? Councilmember Van Rees? Yeah, I just wanna uh, confer with the planning desk on uh, item 68 and 69. That's on first reading and would uh, track to the uh, May public hearing instead of April. If that's correct, then I need to bump it off of first. Just to Mulligan? clarify. Bless you. If you, hi, um, yeah, if you want it to track for a, so it's on first reading tonight, it would be tracking for April. Yeah. If you want it to track for May, then you'll need so to So let's go it. ahead and pull it, then I'll do that at that time. You're going to pull 68 much. and 69? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, we're pulling 68 and 69. Anything else needs to be pulled off for first reading? We'll go through that, we'll take care of those bills, and then we'll get to the bills uh, that were filed late. All right, um, I need a, um, and we're gonna take all the rest of these bills on at one time. Need a motion to approve all bills on first reading. Got a proper second. Any discussion on bills on introduction and first reading? Seeing none, uh, we got a motion and a second. All those in favor of bills on introduction and first reading for passage say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, those bills on introduction and first reading passes. Uh, we will now... Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> We will now uh, uh, take the bills that we pulled off. Item number 51 uh, is the first one, BL 2023-1741, by Council Member Withers, Roten, Hurt, and others. It's an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government's execution and delivery of an intergovernmental project agreement with the Sports Authority of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County relating to the development and funding of a new enclosed stadium um, and um, 
I'm, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but it's authorized the Metropolitan Government's execution delivery of a site coordination agreement relating to the interaction between the operations of the stadium and the development within certain areas around the stadium, authorizing the defeasance of a portion of the Metropolitan Government's general obligation bonds issued to fund the acquisition of the campus on which the stadium is located. Councilmember Withers, she recognized on that bill on first reading. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to move approval of this ordinance on first reading and then for a uh, one meeting deferral of second reading to the April 4th meeting. Uh, as we all know, we have lots of uh, work sessions that are uh, ahead of us. Uh, so that will give the body, um, the council, as well as the sports authority, some additional time before we take this up on second reading. Okay, so the motion is to um, uh, pass on first reading tonight and defer bill 2023-1741. Um, uh, defer second reading to the first meeting in April. That's Got correct. It? Okay, that's the motion. Properly second to discussion on uh, the motion. Councilman Welsh on this one. Okay, Councilman Welsh, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I'm gonna be voting against the deferral tonight because I don't think we should, um, passing on first and deferring, because I don't even think we should be going through the farce of the first reading on a bill this massive with this big of a price tag when um, we have an administration that didn't answer our most basic questions and give us the information that we needed. Um, I'm not really sure why some of my colleagues are even on this body when they allow the administration to treat us that way as if they don't have to answer and that we are just supposed to rubber stamp um, um, these large um, expenditures that are not in the best interest of the city. So I am going to be uh, voting against that tonight um, and be voting against the entire bill here because I just think we should not be playing a game. I think it's a dangerous game. And the uh, what it tells the citizens of Nashville is that we are willing just to move things along willy nilly and not really have the really difficult discussions. And I just don't think we should, I think it's all political theater. And I think we should all vote against this bill on first reading. Thank you. All right. Um, anybody else on the bill? Councilman Roten, you're recognized. I just wanted to say that I've been sat through 25 meetings so far on this. And if, if no one in this body has sat through 25 meetings like I have and looked at this, then they don't need to stand up and say that we haven't done our due diligence. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else on uh, the bill on first reading? Okay, uh, we'll do it by voice vote. The motion is to approve on first reading and defer this bill to second reading uh, for the first meeting in April. That's the motion, it was properly seconded. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. So I've got uh, Councilman Welsh is a no, and Councilman O'Connell, Councilman Parker. Okay, so I've got hands coming up. Councilman Mendez, Councilmember Parker, Councilman Bradford, Councilmember Taylor, Council Member Porterfield, and Council Member uh, Rosenberg. Council Member Benedict, okay. Okay, so uh, the motion is approved. Uh, bill passes on first reading and uh, it will be heard on second reading in the, um, on the first meeting in April. Uh, next bill up is Items number 68 and 69, we can take those together. Those are by Council Member Van Rees. BL 2023-1758 and BL 2023-1759-1758. Uh, is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS 10 to SP zoning on properties located at 3302 Walton Lane. Walton Lane unnumbered and on part of 3333-44 Walton Lane. And then the companion bill, BL 2023-1759, ordinance authorized building material restriction requirements for BL 2023-1758, proposed specific plan zoning district located at 3302 Walton Lane and Walton Lane unnumbered. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Van Rees, you are recognized on both those bills on first reading. Yes, I'd like to move forward on first reading, but defer the public hearing to May the 2nd. Okay, May uh, the first meeting in May. That's correct. Right? Okay, so um, we're passing both on first reading and then both bills will come up on the first meeting in May at the public hearing. That's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Um, 
you adopt the motion. So these are passing on first reading and then uh, they will be heard at the first meeting in May. Uh, next one up is Council Member Syracuse's. It's item number 83, it's BL 2023-1773. Uh, it's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a two-story overlay district for various properties located east of McAvick Pike, south of Meadowood Drive. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized on the bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move uh, my substitute with a brief explanation. All right, so Council Member Syracuse has a substance ordinance that is in your packet. Uh, Council Member Syracuse is moving that properly seconded back to you for an explanation of what it is. Thank you. Uh, one street was just in, inadvertently left off. So this substitute adds that before it goes to the commission and all that, which is why I needed to do this on first. So thank you. Move approval of my substitute. Okay, so I got a motion to approve again properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute that's being proposed? Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor of the substitute say aye. Opposed, no. Substitutes on. Council Member Syracuse, you're on your bill as substitute on first reading. Move approval as substituted. Thank you. All right. So Council Member Syracuse is moving bill 2023 1773 as substituted for passage on first reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion on uh, the bill? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on the bill on first reading. All those in favor of BL 2023-1773 is substituted for passage on first reading. Say aye. Yes. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right. I think that gets us through first reading. And then we're on the late bills, which would be on page 28 of my calendar. Um, let's see. Okay, we're going to take, um, I think they... The first two, I think we can take together. So it's items number um, I, one, and two. These are by council member Toombs. Uh, the first one is BL 2023. Um, and, well, it's unnumbered, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a neighborhood conservation zoning overlay district uh, by, uh, by applying a neighborhood conservation zoning overlay district. Various properties located west of White's Creek Pike, north of Mormons Arm Road, zone RS10. And then the companion bill, uh, which is an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for that bill. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Toombs will take those two bills together. Uh, you're recognized. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to suspend the rules. All right, so did you go to the Rules Committee? Yes, I did. You did, Councilmember Murphy. What was the opinion of the Rules Committee? If I could, I'd like to just go ahead and give her a waiver for all of her, the, we had a, we had a, a tombs agenda and um, all of her late filed items were approved unanimously to move forward. All right, so uh, we'll take that into consideration when we get to the other two <laughs> bills. All right, so Councilmember Tombs, on these two, you need to move to suspend the rules. In the rules. Is your microphone on? Move to suspend okay, the rules. Got it. Okay. So Council Member Timms is moving to suspend the, uh, the rules to consider um, items I-1 and I-2 for consideration tonight to get them on first reading. Uh, is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, the rules are suspended. Uh, you're on your on those two bills. Move for approval. All right, so Council Member Toombs is moving approval of I-1 and I-2 for passage on first reading. Uh, properly seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Those no, you adopt. Um, and then the, the next bill, I-3, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS-10 to R-10 zoning, probably located at 2619 Old Buena Vista Road. It's approximately 300 feet northwest of Day Street. It's 0.41 acres. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on that one. Move to suspend the rules. Council Member uh, Toombs is moving to suspend the rules. Remember, the Rules Committee has already said it's okay. Any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, rules are suspended. You're on that bill. Move for approval. Okay, Councilmember Toombs says move for approval of that bill. It's I-3 on your calendar. Properly seconded. This is on first reading. Any discussion? All those in favor of the passage of that bill on first reading tonight, I-3, say aye. Opposed, no. That one is adopted on first reading, and now you're on item I-4. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS-5 to R-6 only for property located at 1210 Katy Avenue, approximately 260 feet north of Fern Avenue. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized on that bill. Move to suspend the rules. Councilmember Toombs is moving to suspend the rules. It's I-4 on your calendar. Any objection to suspension of the rules to get it before us tonight? Yeah. Seeing none, rules are suspended. You're on your bill. 
Move for approval. Council Member Toombs move for approval of, uh, of that particular bill as I-4 for passage on first reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of passage of the bill on first reading, it's I-4 on your calendar, say aye. Opposed, no. I think we got them all through. That one's approved on first reading. That takes care of all those late bills on first reading. All right, we are now on bills on second reading. This is on page 29 of your calendar. Um, I'll go through the bills that are on uh, consent. Uh, first one on consent is item number 92, bill 2023-1731. That's on consent. 1732 is on consent. 1733 is on consent, 1734 is on consent, <clears throat> 1735 on consent, 1736 is on consent, 1737 on consent, 1738 is on consent, and 1739 is on consent. Any, anything needs to be bumped off of the consent agenda on second reading? All right, seeing none, uh, we're on... Um, these are the captions of those bills. First one up is item number 92, bill 2023-1731 by Council Member Sawara, Toombs, Porterfield, and others. It's ordinance to amend sections uh, 2.149.040 of the Metropolitan Code regarding the Barnes Fund for Affordable Housing, bill 2023-1732, Sledge, Withers, and Pulley, ordinance authorizing uh, Reservoir uh, Zone 3, LLC, to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments on the right of way located at 1310 Hillsdale Avenue. Uh, item number 94, BL 2023-1733, Roten, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the acquisition of certain wide of way easements and property rights by negotiation or condemnation for use in public projects uh, of the Metropolitan Government initially for purposes of the Na National Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure. Uh, Item number 95, BL 2023-1734, Roten and Pulley. Ordinance approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of National Davis County and Principal Environmental Inc. Provide parts and products needed for Metro Water and Sewer Services equipment. Item number 96, BL 2023-1735, Swope, Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new public water, sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes. Easements were properly located at 5693 Cloverdale Drive. Item number 97, BL 2023-1736, Pulley and Weathers, an, or, an ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept the replacement of existing public water main and new public sanitary sewer manholes for probably located at 3808 Cleghorn Avenue. Item number 98, BL 2023-1737, Swopes, Withers, and Pulley, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to accept new public sanitary sewer manholes for probably located at 95 Plum, Nelly, Circle. Item number 99, BL 2023-1738, Benedict, Withers, and Pulley, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing sanitary sewer main Main center sewer manholes and easements, except new public center sewer main center sewer manholes and easements. Three properties located at 2304, 2306, and 2310 Riverside Drive. And item number 100, BL 2023 1739, Council Members Roberts, Withers, and Pulley Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept the replacement of the existing public water main and rehabilitation of the existing center sewer manholes. Property located at 5607B Morrow Road. Uh, those are the items on the second reading consent. Agenda, does anything need to be bumped off? Okay, so uh, Council Member Van Rees needs to abstain from item number 92. All right, so should be listed as abstaining from BL 2023 1731. Um, I need committee reports. Uh, Affordable housing, Council Member Hauser, you're recognized. Affordable housing, moved at Bill 2023-1731, and we approve five in favor, zero against, none abstain. All right, thank you, Council Member Roten. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and Finance uh, approved uh, Bill number 2023-1733 and 1734, 12 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Withers, Planning and Zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and Zoning met and considered BL 2023 1732, 33, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39. And we recommended approval of each of these items, six in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. Okay. And Councilmember Pulley, Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Transportation Infrastructure Committee recommended approval BL 2023. 1732 through 1739, 
10 in favor, zero against, and I move approval of the consent agenda. All right, so Councilor Pulley is moving approval of the second reading consent agenda, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. And remember that Councilmember Van Rees is abstaining on uh, item number 92, Bill 2023-1731. All right, let's go back and pick up the bills on second reading uh, that we hadn't taken up yet. Item number 88, Bill 2022-1449 by Councilmember O'Connell, Parker, Benedict, and others. Ordinance creating chapter uh, 2.153 of the Metropolitan Code, establishing a bicycle and pedestrian advisory commission. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to get committee reports, please. All right, public facilities, Council Member Hurt. We're on item number 88, Bill 2022-1449. It was deferred, um, six in favor and zero against. Okay, uh, transportation, Council Member Pulley. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, transportation, uh, recommended uh, approval of the proposed amendment by Councilmember O'Connell, 10 in favor, zero against, and then uh, recommended a deferral to the first meeting in May, 11 in favor, zero against. Okay. All right, Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Just check uh, with Chair Hurt. I believe we got that amendment on in her committee as well. Okay, six to zero. Okay. Amendment went on on uh, in public facilities. All right, Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to defer the first meeting of May with a brief comment. Okay, so uh, do you want to put the amendment on? Yeah, I'm sorry. Let's. Uh, I'd like to move the amendment, please. All right. So Councilmember O'Connell is moving an amendment to Bill 2022-1449, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. The amendment is just housekeeping, and I encourage colleagues to support. All right. So we've got the housekeeping amendment. Any questions about the amendment? All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment's on. Now, Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd uh, like to, and I guess I've, the motion is, so we've got the amendment on and we're moved to deferral, and I've got a comment now. Is that correct? Uh, so um, you want to defer to the first yes. meeting in May. Yep. Right? Um, properly seconded now. Great, thank you. Uh, so this, the point of this bill is I, I applaud the, um, the investment in the Vision Zero process. Historically, um, Vision Zero has been a movement, uh, not just here in Nashville, but globally focused on reducing pedestrian and cyclist fatalities, and I think it's a really worthwhile thing. Uh, when Nashville had a Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee that was uh, established during the Dean administration, it was focused on multiple things. It was focused on goals. It's how we actually established any standing whatsoever as a bicycle-friendly community. It was focused on um, utility and, and design principles for connectivity. It was also focused on toolkits. It offered maps and other things that people moving around our city uh, might find useful. And those are not historically the province of the, the process of delivering Vision Zero. So I want to, I, I wanted the BPAC to come back to offer those things again. Um, there does seem to be some discussion that maybe a subcommittee of Vision Zero could tackle this. I'm willing to give this a little more time working with NDOT, uh, working with the members of that task force to see if, in fact, that it will succeed in that regard. Um, but I'm, I'm not... I'm not yet at the point where I feel like we want to withdraw or indefinitely defer this. I think uh, one more deferral will let us have a little more information and encourage colleagues to support the deferral. Thank you. All right, so um, Council Member O'Connell is moving to defer this to the first meeting in May. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion, uh, that will uh, take this bill to the first meeting in May, BL 2022-1449. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this one's deferred. Thank you. Uh, we're on item number 89, BL 2022-1607, also by Councilman O'Connell. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CS to MULA in its zoning. Properties located at 1407 Milson Street, 1402, 1404, 1406, 1410, and 1412 Joe Johnston Avenue, approximately 50 feet west of 14th Avenue North. Councilman O'Connell, you're recognized on your bill. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports, please. Uh, there are no committee oh, reports. Well, look at that. That's what's even better about this one. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, then I'd like to move approval. I think this one has to be deferred. Oh, is this the, yes, I think you are correct. Yeah. Uh, this one was the one that we had a tracking issue with, so. Uh, this one has to be deferred, and I think you want to defer to the first meeting in April. I believe that is correct, because we had to get yes. to the public hearing. That's correct. So this would be a motion to defer to the first meeting in April, properly seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion, this one will go to the first meeting in April on BL 2022-1607. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. This one's deferred. All right, next one up is item number 90, BL 2022-1630. This is an ordinance to amend Title II of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to create the Nashville Film and Television Advisory Board. Councilmember Swope, Syracuse Hall, and others. Uh, Councilmember Swope, you are recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. Committee reports, please. All right. Uh, public facilities, Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. This was also deferred uh, by two meetings. Okay, so was this. So at this date, keeping track with uh, 1631. Was this deferred two meetings or was it um, a deferred? So uh, let me check because I've heard different things about this. But was this deferred against the wishes of the sponsor? or was just a simple deferral motion? Uh, the sponsor basically said he didn't care. What, what did you say? <laughs> okay, so um, I've heard different things. I'm just making sure I got this right. So uh, it was not against the wishes of the sponsor. So what did the committee actually say? The committee actually moved and approved for a two meeting deferral. Okay, so the committee uh, moved for a, def a two meeting deferral. All right, so council member Swope, back to you. Um, that's the committee reports, but um, uh, you have the ability to do what you want to with the bill. Yes, and I do believe that if I follow the committee's recommendation on this, it automatically throws 1630 into an indefinite deferral. Is that correct, legal? Um, Ms. Darby? Yes, it would be an indefinite deferral. So in the interest of being nice and understanding full well that this body has two different viewpoints on how to deal with the industry that I've spent my entire career in, I'm just going to defer this for one meeting. Okay, so uh, Council Member Swope is deferring this for one meeting. That means it's an automatic deferral, but then you can put it back on. Okay, so the motion is to defer one meeting? Yep. Okay, so Council Member Swope is moving to defer this one one meeting, properly seconded. A discussion on the deferral motion. Okay, we're on the deferral motion. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. This one's deferred one meeting. Okay, we're now on item number 91. That's BL 2022, 1631 by Council Member Stiles, Welsh, Toombs, and others. An ordinance to amend Title II of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to create the Nashville Entertainment Commission. Council Member Stiles, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Um, budget and Finance, Councilman Roten. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, 1631, we had an amendment put on the substitute by Councilmember Stiles, 12 in favor, zero against, and then it was def indefinitely deferred over her objection, eight in favor, two against, two present, not voting. Sorry, abstaining. Okay, so this one was uh, deferred indefinitely over the wishes of the sponsor, all right, which means it's an automatic deferral. Let me get the public facilities. Council Member Hurt, did y'all take this one up? This would have been item number BL 2022-1631. Got a lot of work to do. It's item number 91, BL 2022-1631. Could you just hold one second for me, please? Sure. The committee approved to defer this also um, six in favor and zero against okay. for the indefinite deferral. 
Okay. Um, so, Councilmember Stiles, this one is um, deferred indefinitely uh, against the wishes of the sponsor, so it's an automatic deferral. Can't be brought up on the discussion tonight. Okay, so it is automatically deferred. We don't have to talk to tonight. All right, um, and that should take care of all items on second reading. Turning it all over to Ms. Toombs. It's all yours. I think you can handle the whole thing. Okay. Are you leaving? Oh. We're both leaving by. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're on bills on third reading, and there is a third reading uh, consent agenda. I'm going to read through the list and let me know if something needs to come off. Bill 2022-1612, which is item number 101, 1642, 1643, 1648, 1689, 1692, 1693, 1707. Is there anything that needs to come off of the consent agenda? <laughs> Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Madam President. 1694, please. Okay. Is there anything else that needs to come off? Mm -hmm. All right, I don't see any other hands. So I'm going to read the captions all right number item number 101 bill 2022-1612 sponsors parker changes 1.09 acres from cs to csns zoning for properties located at 1302 and 1308 dickerson pike Item number 103, Bill 2022-1642, changes uh, sponsors hall and tombs, changes 14.19 acres from CLCS and RS 7.5 to MULANS and RM 20 ANS zoning for property located at 4100 Clarksville Pike. And by changing from CLCS and RS 7.5 to MULANS and RM 20 ANS zoning for property located at 4100 Clarksville Pike. I think they have the typo. Item number 104, Bill 2022-1643, Council's 4.08 acres of a plant unit development overlay district for property located at 4100 Clarksville Pike. Item number 105, Bill 2023-1648, sponsors Sledge, Withers, Pulley, Benedict, and others, renames Horton Avenue between 11th Avenue South and 18th Avenue South to D4 Bailey Avenue. Item number 106, Bill 2023-1689, sponsors Parker and Allen, creates a permit program for parklets and streeteries in Davidson County and establishing a free fee structure for such licenses and amending chapter 13.32 to add a new section to be designated section 13.32.166 of the Metropolitan Code. <laughs> Item number 108, Bill 2023-1692, sponsors Withers and Pulley, adopts a recordation of renaming, additions, and deletions of acceptances and abandonments as reflected on the centerline layer to date for the Metropolitan Government. Item number 109, Bill 2023-1693, sponsors Cash, provides the honorary street name designation of one Vanderbilt Way for the entirety of Kirkland Circle. Item number 111, Bill 2023-1695, sponsors Tombs, Roten, Withers, and Pulley, authorizes temporary construction easements to Piedmont Natural Gas Company, Incorporated, for property owned by the Metropolitan Government located at Zero Brick Church Pike and 1354 Brick Church Pike. Item number 112, Bill 2023-1696, Sponsors wrote and Pulley approves a contract between the Metropolitan Government and PSI Water Technologies Inc. to provide microchlor on-site hypochlorite generation system parts and services. 
Item number 113. Bill 2023-1697, ban is existing public utility easement for property located 738th Avenue South, sponsors O'Connor, Withers, and Pulley. Item number 114, Bill 2023-1698, sponsors Withers and Pulley, accepts a new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes, and manholes and easements for property located at 3105 Hamilton Church Road. Item number 115, Bill 2023-1699, sponsors Withers and Pulley, accepts a new public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 3161 Hamilton Church Road. Item number 116, Bill 2023-1700, sponsors O'Connor, Withers and Pulley, accepts new water and sanitary sewer main, fire hydrant assembly, and sanitary sewer manhole, manhole for property located at 825 6th Avenue South. Item number 117, Bill 2023-1701, Sponsors Cash Withers and Pulley, abandons a public hydrant assembly for property located at 1215 21st Avenue South. Item number 118, Bill 2023-1702, sponsors Parker Withers and Pulley, abandons existing public water main and easements and to accept the new public water main for properties located at 1233 E Leachy Avenue and 1300 North 5th Street. Item number 119, Bill 2023-1703, sponsors Tunes Withers and Pulley, abandons existing water mains, fire hydrant assemblies and easements, and to accept new public water mains, hi fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manhole, and easements for property located at 334 Ewing Drive. Item number 120, Bill 2023-1704, sponsors Withers and Pulley, accepts the relocation of existing public water main for pu property located at 1421 Rural Hill Road. Item number 121, Bill 2023-1705, <laughs> sponsors Withers and Pulley, accepts new public water main and fire hydrant assembly for property located at 1631 Corporate Place. Item number 122, Bill 2023-1706, sponsors Gamble Withers and Pulley, accepts new public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 3500 Brick Church Pike. Item number 123, Bill 2023-1707, sponsors Sledge, Withers, and Pulley, accepts new public sanitary sewer main and sanitary sewer manhole for property located at 600 Southgate Avenue. Is there anything that needs to come off of the consent agenda? All right, um, Councilman Withers, do you have any committee reports? I do, I believe I have two items that were on our agenda, the consent agenda. Those are items Bill 2022, 1642 and 1643, and the Planning and Zoning Committee uh, recommended approval of both of those, six in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. And can you move the consent agenda, please? I would love to move the consent agenda. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion on the consent agenda? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries, and that leaves us with item number 102, Bill 2022-1619, sponsors Pulley and Roberts, changes point two nine acres from R6 to SP zoning for property located at 60, 6111 Cowden Avenue to permit a surface parking lot. Councilman Pulley, you recognize. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm going to move a one meeting deferral. There's some late information that needs to be brought in on this. And uh, so uh, I think moving one meeting deferral will take care of that. So uh, uh, that's my motion to defer one committee meeting. Committee report for this, it says. Yes, committee report. Councilman Withers, can I get a committee report? Uh, yes, Madam Pro Tem. The Planning and Zoning Committee uh, received Councilmember Roberts' request for a one meeting deferral, and we supported that. Uh, six in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. Back to you, Councilman Pulley, if you want Sorry, to read your uh, motion. Ms. Vice, uh, Ms. President, I should have asked for those reports on, in, on the front end, but I move for a one meeting deferral. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded for a one meeting deferral. Is there any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion carries. That gets us to 1690. 
107, okay. Next up is item number 107, Bill 2023-1690, sponsored Syracuse, Roten, and Pulley, amends the Metropolitan Code to establish a stormwater capacity fee. Councilman Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Pro Tem. Uh, committee reports, please. Oh, we don't have any. No. Don't have any. <laughs> I have an amendment I'd like to move. All right. Been properly moved and seconded for an amendment. Back to you to explain what your amendment does. Thank you so much. So this basically just exempts the fee from affordable housing projects. Okay. So you want to approval. Thank you. All right. Any discussion on the amendment? Councilwoman Allen. Yes, ma'am, I couldn't find my button. That's an awesome idea. I'm, I'm glad you're doing that. Just one question is, do we, is there a, a system for administering it? Does the uh, housing division ap approve the, the projects ahead of time or something? If, any answer? Mm -hmm. Director Darby. Uh, in the amendment, the director for, for water would make the waiver um, or his designee. The director for water would make the? Would authorize the waiver. Okay, if would, would he get affordable housing if the project contained affordable housing units over 50%? Okay, so there's a criteria in there. Yeah, the majority okay. have to be affordable housing in the. I missed that in the amendments packet. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you doing that. All right, any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? All right, Councilman Syracuse, we're back on your um, bill as amended. Move approval as amended, thank you. That's been properly moved and seconded to uh, move the bill as amended. Is there any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next up, we have item 110. Bill 2023 1694, sponsors Roten in Syracuse, approves an agreement between the Metro Police Department and Airbus Helicopters Inc. for the lease of an M MNPD helicopter to be used at the HAI Heli Heli Expo 2023 show. Councilman Roten, you recognize. Uh, move approval. Any committee, no. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm curious, today is March 7th, and this is for a lease from March 3rd through March 7th. How does that work? Um, Ms. Darby or I, whomever? I have been advised that the that the convention is starts on March 3rd and that the lease will actually begin as soon as the approval is granted by the by the council and that the primary purpose for the lease was in order to be reimbursed for the time and for the use of the helicopter. Thank you. Um, I guess my only other question would be for the administration is we needed these helicopters pretty badly. How are we sending them away to Atlanta for five days? Uh, the uh, question that had, I think originally came up through Councilmember Swar at the previous uh, council meeting, and we have additional helicopters here um, that would service any urgency. Additionally, um, I, math is not my strong suit, but if I'm calculating correctly, these particular uh, helicopters have an airspeed of just under 200 miles per hour. Uh, the distance to Atlanta uh, by crow is just over 200 uh, miles, so you can get there. It can return pretty swiftly in the event of, of an emergency. Well, a sort of emergency because we don't need it for an hour, but I'm glad to hear that math isn't your strong suit. We, we're going to have budget coming up soon, but okay, uh, thank you. That was my only question. All right, any additional discussion on Bill 2023-1694? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion carries. And I believe that completes the agenda. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Let's talk about it now. <laughs> That's the shortest one.
Herb. Um, council had a 41-page agenda containing 123 items. The most high-profile uh, item before the council tonight was a resolution on first reading, excuse, excuse me, an ordinance on third reading that uh, was uh, involving the $2.1 billion Titan Roof Stadium. It would be the largest public construction project in Nashville and perhaps in Tennessee history. The council earlier approved by close to a two-thirds vote uh, a preliminary term sheet for this plan. This is now the final agreement come back to the body for approval. The ordinance itself is about 250 pages long and one council member disguised it as full of dense legalese. Normally a bill like this would be routinely approved on first reading and sent with the other first reading measures for study and committee. But tonight the stadium ordinance was first pulled off the consent calendar and voted on separately. Then was a motion approved to approve it on first reading but then deferred until the first council meeting in April. There were some concern among in some community leaders that are supposed to be here tonight and also by some members of the council that uh, they needed a longer deferral that a couple even said they didn't think they had passed this bill at all. There were at least 10 council votes no on this that came out on voice vote that was taken on the bill tonight. In both cases, the approval, there were still enough council votes to approve this on first reading and also approve it to send it to a committee and defer it until the first meeting in, in April. The bill will come back at first on second reading at that time. This uh, extra time will allow for joint meetings of multiple committees to have uh, study sessions on this particular project. There'll be lots of questions, no doubt, to be asked again by Titans officials and officials of outgoing Mayor John Cooper's office. And we'll see how that goes. But again, at this point, it comes back on second reading. We'll need a simple majority to pass on second reading. If we get to third and final reading, it will take 21 votes to approve it on third and final reading. Among other ordinances tonight, uh, the council saw the, uh, the bill that would uh, protect the city's tree canopy withdrawn at the request of the sponsor and the planning commission. The sponsor Kathleen Murphy indicated that there had been pressure from the state, not from the Republicans necessarily, she said, but from lobbying groups up there who do not like this bill and said that they would see, seek the state to nullify all Metro's uh, laws currently on the books that have anything to do with this area. So she's decided to withdraw it and probably not do anything about it for at least a year. I think that's part of what they, she was told they needed to do by the group that was putting this pressure on about it. Council also uh, considered and deferred a, a million dollar uh, bill, no, excuse me, the, the council also deferred a bill tonight on resolution tonight, RS 23, 2037, that would appropriate a million dollars for the community safety funds from the a grant to the Urban League of Middle Tennessee. Of Middle Tennessee. The monies will be for community safety grants that set aside in the operating budget for the provision of violence interruption services. Uh, the, the council members um, were concerned, had a few questions about what was actually in the lease, uh, excuse me, the grant with this, the grant group, and they, there were some numbers I had con concerns about to the point where they finally said they need to defer this to see exactly what's in there, and so it's been deferred until April to see exactly what's going on. Maybe, and this, excuse me, said, I think it's been deferred for one meeting. Council also uh, considered a resolution tonight that would uh, establish the Nashville Needs Impact Fund. This is a new program that was contemplated on the preliminary non-binding sheet on the new Titan Stadium. I think it's actually something the council asked to have put in. The funds would be used to provide resources to nonprofit entities serving the community in the areas of public education, public transit, affordable housing, as well as things supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion in sports, including gender equity. The original funds would come from a million dollar contribution from Tennessee Titans the first year. Metro government could also consider appropriations on this. Uh, at this point, this bill has been deferred at this point because it's a resolution and it'll come back and track with the budget when it will come back and track with the, uh, the actual stadium uh, final agreement when it comes back on uh, uh, in the few, coming up in April. Council will also approve resolution 2023-246 tonight, which would amend the pay plan for Metro Police. It would supplement the pay for police officers who are working permanent dedicated shifts in the entertainment district downtown. The extra pay would be up to $1,250 of incentive pay per month. Incentive pay would be affected by the way the first of this month, so it'll be somewhat retroactive, but no doubt will be on the next paycheck. The council also approved a number of resolutions that either accepted or applied for grants. We went through those quite a bit at the beginning of the meeting, but almost all of them were approved on the consent calendar tonight. Uh, I think there was some question a little bit about the uh, the AIDS uh, grant, and I think that was because one council member needed to defer about that because of the because of her employment. Under memorializing resolutions, the council approved all those tonight. Uh, the only thing that was deferred was the one that would establish the last Friday in March of each year as Strangulation Awareness Day in Nashville. Now it's thought to be better to make that day in May, so the bill will be deferred and will come back later with the date of May instead of March. Under second reading bills, the council again uh, uh, deferred.
deferred establishing a bicycle and pedestrian advisory commission. Council also again decided not to make a choice between creating the Nashville Film and Television Advisory Board or the Nashville Entertainment Commission. Both these bills have now been indefinitely deferred and the signal from the council is they'd like these sponsors to get together and come up with a bill that everybody can support and rather than have these two competing bills on basically the same topic before the council every couple of meetings. Yeah. Council also approved on third reading tonight a bill that would rename a portion of Horton Avenue in favor of legendary African-American Grand Ole Opry star D. Ford Barely. They also set up a program, they also gave final approval to a program along with rules, regulations, and fees for parklets and streeteries in Davidson County that's related to sidewalk cafes. And finally, they approved an air agreement with Airbus Helicopters, Inc. to lease the new Metro helicopter to be used out at the Highly, Highly Expo Show 2023 down in Atlanta. It's been held there the last several days. There still remain some questions about why this chopper was so badly needed by the police department was now, was now going out of town at least for a few days. Police officials continue to say and so did the members of the administration tonight that the chopper is trans, travels so quickly it could be back in Nashville in less than an hour if there was a need for that. The council approved it, but there was still seemed to be some skepticism in some of the questions that were asked tonight. The council is now in recess until the 20th of March. We'll be here at that time to provide live coverage. Until then, I'm Pat Nolan, and good night from the council chambers. Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council has been coming to you live from the council chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's been a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.